Hey everyone, it's Aquila, and this is a Lefty Knitter podcast here on the YouTubes. Today we're going to work on the sock machine, and we are going to be using the 48-cylinder. This is Erlbacher Speedster, and I'm going to use this sport weight yarn that I have here from Avalon Springs. And I'm going to make a sock for my daughter. I'm going to be doing a different kind of heel that I've never done before. So stick with me and let's see this journey. Uh, so we got to put our, if you're new, I'm going, if you're new to using a CSM or circular knitting machine, I'm going to try to keep it newbie and advanced friendly. So this is your setup bonnet and this goes in your machine and you hang, I have one with split ring hem, uh, split rings on it and you hang one on every other needle. I don't like that side. I'm using my pick tool that I got with my machine. People use all different tools. What is happening here? Oh, that needle was closed. That latch was closed. That will make it feel weird and possibly break a needle. Okay, sorry. So I try to explain everything I'm doing. I'm trying a new camera setup today. It's the same camera, just in a different position. So I love all feedback, positive, negative. What could I do? What could be better? If there's anything you guys wanna see. This is your buckle. This hangs on your setup bonnet because you need downward pressure, which is weight. And then my weights are in a koozie here and we're gonna hang that on the buckle all right so I'm going to use some scrap waste yarn I have a bunch that I just reuse until it's not reusable anymore and you put that into your mast yeah oh sorry new setup this is gonna be awkward and difficult um, so I've had conversations with people about doing these kinds of videos and I'm not sure <sighs> it's really difficult to be like I'm gonna put this video out and there's already 85 of the same video I know knitting videos you can search like a left-leaning slant right-leaning slant and you can get a ton of different videos and not everybody's video like, I watch a bunch of videos with for new techniques, and sometimes I don't like the way they show it, or I feel like they don't explain it well enough. So, me putting out another video here, is it really hurting anything? If you come across it and it helps you, awesome. You come across it and you're like, that girl's not my cup of tea. You don't have to watch it, right? So, yeah. I'm gonna stop here, my marked cylinder, Needle here is the last needle I'll knit on, and the next one is needle number one. Uh, people call it the three o'clock position. There's there's all kinds of names. So I'm going to tuck my waist yarn in. I use fishing cord. I didn't show this in the last video. This is what I use. It is a 65-pound fishing line for my rip cord, and I already have a bunch of those also cut. So I'm going to be doing a different heel today. I said I wanted to try a different kind of heel. And my ultimate goal is to end up showing you doing a video with a, just a bunch of different heels. Now, you know, everybody likes different techniques. They like it the way it looks certain ways. So is there really a complete wrong way to do this? No. Do you find a preference? Yes. So that's what I'm getting at. All right, <clears throat> now that I have that in, I'm gonna put my yarn on. I'm gonna do, I was gonna do a Pico hem. Let's do a Pico hem, hung hem. I'm gonna put that in, leave a little bit of a tail. And I'm gonna do, let's do fifth, let's do 10 rows. We'll do a really short hem. Mark one. I'm just going to hold this. I have a feeling this is going to be really loose. I might actually redo this whole video because I feel like 
that is going to be a very loose fabric. I could tighten my tension a little. Let's hang the hem and see what it looks like. And, oops, I did way more than I was going to. Well, we did 16. So let's... <laughs> let's do a, the Pico edge here, which you can lift the weight a little. So needle number two, I'm going to take that stitch and go to needle number one. And you're just going to keep transferring. If you pull the needle out a little bit, you can transfer it a little easier. And I also have my weight lifted with my legs a little bit. Try not to get in the way so you guys can see what I'm doing, but inevitably, I'm going to get in the way once in a while. I feel like these videos, <clears throat> I want to do different techniques on different things so you guys can see different things together, pieced together in a project. So I'm going to switch over to the other side of my hook so I don't drop stitch hopefully these are down in the bed I'm gonna crank around a little bit probably could have cranked further All right, almost there. Crank around a little bit more. Now, if your carrier goes back like that, see how it goes backwards? Just make sure that you have that yarn tensioned in your carrier before you start moving forward. I've definitely not paid attention to that, and I've dropped stitches. It happens. Again, this machine is all about practice. Any new tool that you're going to use in life <laughs> needs practice. It doesn't have to be knitting, just in general. All right. feel like something's off. No, I'm not. Okay. Woo. All right, since I did 16, I need to do 16. Making sure that that was... I don't like this fabric. I think this is going to be a dud video. But I'm going to show you guys my fails. So 16, 32. Stop it at the six o'clock position to start hanging on needle number one. Yeah, I don't think this fabric is gonna be what I intended. See how loose that is? Well, I might just end this here and show you guys a Pico and restart and do another video for uh, the whole sock. I'm just not liking it. Let's crank it off and show you guys what I'm not liking about it. So I'm gonna put, <clears throat> I'm not gonna put the weight back on it. I'm just gonna undo it from this yarn carrier. I don't wanna cut my project. So I'm just gonna crank it off, pull it down with a little bit of tension, and you're gonna see what I'm talking about. All right. See that? See how open that is? Even the waist yarn looks tighter. Yep, don't like it. I'm gonna make the tension a little bit tighter for this fabric. So this would have been folded over and made a cute little pico at the top of her sock. But I don't care for it. So we're gonna we're gonna redo this and I'm gonna have a series of fails on my channel because I think even if I get to a point, you guys are gonna be like, you know, sometimes you just gotta start over. I should have done a swatch. Um, 
I hate doing swatches. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do swatches very often, so uh, that is a something you can do on the machine. Crank a little bit of your yarn, don't cut it, and see what the fabric looks like. So I'm going to tension up my machine here. The way you tension it to make your needles tighter or uh, a shorter um, a needle, a shorter needle length is um, going turning it counterclockwise and this brings your v-cam upwards doing it one two three and four that brought my v-cam up which makes my stitches shorter on my needles all right so that was a fail and i'll come back at you with another video hopefully doing this sock with a better tension maybe i'll do a swatch in between <laughs> all right bye guys sorry it was you know, a learning experience. There we go. Learning experiences. All right. Until the next one. Bye.